Welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Michael Crawley, and you're listening to the OSHA Oops Podcast, brought to you by God Safety. I don't know what to tell you today. Welcome, this is Michael and Rick from OSHA Oops. Let me just tell you, the reason why I'm so distraught is the one we're going to be going over today. It's making us a little angry. Am I right, Rick? This one is really frustrating us. I mean, this one is going to be a doozy. Now, for you guys in California, you guys are going to say, well, of course they're making us do this. You on the outside of California in... May I say Normalville? Let me just tell you when it comes to this. You're going to go, I can't believe what they're telling me. So that's why Rick is going to tell you the code. And if you want to take a little pencil and write down what this code is, you may want to. Rick, guys, put it up on the board. Rick, read us out. Show us what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about Title Eight, Section 4184B. <sighs> All machines or parts of machines used in any industry or type of work not specifically covered in Group 8, which represents similar hazards as machines covered under these point of operation orders, shall be guarded at the point of operation as required by the regulations contained in Group 8. Now, this code is vague. It is the guarding of the point of operation. Machineries, we're talking when a machine comes in, it does something magical. It cuts, it spins, it trims, it grinds, it does something. The point of operation in California is the key topic for any safety professional that's going into these facilities. Yes. We see so many citations in this area. And when we walk in as safety professionals to the sites, we're like, listen, what do we got to guard the point of operation? A lot of business owners go, that is insane. That machine you cannot do. Now, we're going to tell you and show you pictures of the machine they're talking about. Rick, wow, these people irritate some and excite some others. All right. Prior to and during the course of inspection included to, but not limited to, Shuba -duba -duba. Duba, the employer failed to ensure a clausing drill press machine was guarded at its point of operation. I, I can't even say it out loud, the clausing drill press. This is a basically a drill press. It's got a, it's got a metal base at the top, a long pole, the drill press motor's at the top, and then it's got the thing. You crank the handle down and you're working it. The point of operation is when the drill comes in contact with the material and magic takes place. The point of operation. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying Rick, Rick, you can't guard a drill press. I'm afraid you can, right, Rick? Yes. I'm afraid you can. It's going to irritate you. Let me make sure you're clear. You will be irritated, but you can guard a drill press. It is basically a telescoping guard that kind of pushes up as you get to the material. We're going to throw some pictures up here of what this looks like, what a guarded and unguarded drill press looks like. We tell clients this all the time, and they look at us and go, you're absolutely nuts. I don't even know a place that does this. Well, I can tell you a place that's going to do it now, and it's this company in the state of California that got cited. And how much did they get cited for this one, Rick? $6,750. $6,000 and change on this citation because the drill press did not have a telescoping guard on it to guard what? The point of operation. Now, a little tip on this. I've seen people on a drill press get cited for not guarding the chuck right? The spinning right. chuck because their hair or very manly beard get, get pulled into it, right? The other things we get cited for is that the the the, the, K, the uh, guards on top are removed and you can see yes, the pulleys the spinning. Yep. Those get cited all the time and I can understand that one. One of the other ones they get cited for is that they're not bolting this to the floor. They're not securing it in a fashion to prevent displacement. And that's what that is about. But right now we're talking about guarding that chuck. So if you're angry like I am, or you're frustrated that we have to guard the point of operation on a drill press, give me an amen. Amen. Okay, there you go. So in the rest of us that live in the state of California, we just got to guard it and say whatever we're going to do. We just got to do it to do it. So don't get caught in a pinch. Guard those drill presses. If you got questions about this one and you're irritated, you just want to yell at somebody, give us a call. Definitely ask for Rick if you're going to yell at somebody. But if you have questions, give me a call. I would love to be a friendly helper to help you. This is Michael and Rick again from OSHA Oops, and we are excited to be with you today. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you. To learn more about safety services we provide, head over to GodSafety.com and check us out. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time. And remember, stay safe out there.